about child support enforcement and who better to talk to about that issue than Attorney General of Guam, Leonard Rupatis, and uh, Assistant Attorney General of Child Support, Men child support Enforcement Division, Bobby Sabeda. Thank you both for joining us tonight. And thanks, thanks for having us. Sabrina. Now, um, how serious of, of a problem would you say uh, it is when it comes to deadbeat parents on, on Guam? Well, it's a, it's a problem not just on Guam, but a, a problem nationwide. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that, that, that this issue causes is it causes families to rely on other resources um, or not have resources at all. And so one of the things that, that, that I think the program does, it uh, allows parents, allows the, the children especially, because that's what it's for, is to make sure that, that the, the kids get their needs met. Um, and one and kind of a side benefit is is that some of the money that um, um, parents or the, the custodial parents are going to be getting on on uh, from welfare will go actually go back to the state. Mm -hmm. I mean, when when you're on child support, you're not on welfare. I mean, there's you have to separate the two. So it's kind of a um, what, what's the the term? Yeah, cost recovery. Yeah, program. it's cost recovery yeah. for the for the government to to uh, collect child support if if they're on. On welfare, but this another side benefit, which is kind of an important thing now. It's it's a it's kind of a, a change, kind of a sea change in, in child support, is that we want to make sure that the the non-custodial parent, and I'm I'm going to say father, just only because it's the highest percentage, but it, it does include mothers too. But it, it gets the fathers involved in in the upbringing of the child. It, it it gets them together, and studies have shown time and time again, you have two parents raising a child or helping raising a child, a child can, can, cannot you know, do anything but, but thrive. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's one of the, the, one of the benefits of, of that. What are some of the, I guess, the stats uh, that, in terms of the active cases your office deals with? Well, we have about 6,500 um, active cases. 1,100 of those are interstate. The rest are local cases. Um, we have out of those um, 6,500 cases, many of those are in arrears. And if we were to collect all those arrears, um, I think they total about $60 million right now. Wow. So That's 60, on the books. 6,500 um, cases. Right. And you said a majority of them are in arrears? Um, I would say probably 50, 55 percent, mm -hmm. maybe even 60 percent are in arrears. And how do you deal with situations such as uh, deadbeat parents that live uh, off island? And, and that aren't paying, that are in arrears. How do you okay, go about Okay, with, with collecting? those cases, we have um, UIFSA, the, U, um, the Uniform Interstate Family Support Act. Um, all the states and territories have a 4D program, a child support program that's sanctioned by the federal government. And we um, all honor each other's uh, orders under the Full Faith and Credit Act. So, for example, um, if I had a Guam order and the uh, non-custodial parents in California, all I have to do is ask California to enforce it there where the, the non-custodial parent is working and vice versa if the non-custodial parent's on Guam and it's a California order we would also enforce California's order we won't have to go back to court and you know reinvent the wheel get a new order mm -hmm. it's it's as good as you know on its face mm -hmm. well you know Guam is so small why do you think it's so difficult uh, to collect and, and get you know these deadbeat parents to pay up um, a couple of problems Guam has um, the highest number of unemployed non-custodial parents and the highest number of non-custodial parents who live below the poverty level. So that, you know, that contributes to our, uh, the difficulty in collecting mm -hmm. um, these arrears. What about, um, do you have situations where parents are paying but custodial parents aren't uh, claiming the support? Um, it's really, it's rare mm -hmm. that, um, uh, non-custodial parents paying and the, the mm -hmm. custodial is not receiving it. The only situation I could think of is say the non-custodial parent never paid so the custodial parent never expected a payment then all mm -hmm. of a sudden we get a tax offset say $5,000. Now we need to try to get the money to the custodial parent who probably has moved because she never received payment, yeah. never expected payment and so just left and now we're trying to you know find the person to give them the money. It's, it's important that they come to the office yeah. so that they can get the, the case going. Um, if they've never come get you know, started the case going, then then there's no way we can, can find them. For parents who, who may be watching and aren't sure how to go about filing for child support, what advice can you give them? 
Well, they could apply for our services. Um, they can come into our office. We have the, the application forms available on the first floor. Um, we also have our application forms available online on our website, www.guamattorneygeneral.com, and click on child support. Do you have to establish paternity or, or custody before child support is awarded? Is yes. Yeah. Yes, you do. Um, you have to establish the paternity. Um, we don't get involved in custody issues. We're prohibited mm -hmm. right. uh, by our grant, but we do have to establish paternity, and a uh, non-custodial parent can do that by either voluntarily acknowledging that he's the father by signing a voluntary acknowledgement of paternity form. He, he can also um, ask for a genetic test, um, and in, you know, depending on the results, if it's positive, then, he's the, he's, then paternity is established, or he could just admit in court that he's the father. Okay. But again, this leads to the, the, the benefit to the child. You know, the child knows who the father is. Mm -hmm. And again, the child has this, this bond. And, and that's the other benefit that, that I, um, or one of the things that I think is important in, uh, in establishing and getting the child support through is that it, this bond is established between the, the child and, and the father. And again, studies have shown time and time again, a father in, in the child's life uh, really helps them as they uh, get through um, gr their growth and their development as, as ch children. Well, early in, our, early in our newscast, we did a story on uh, Bill 124. It was introduced by Speaker Judy Wampat, Senator Adolfo Palacios, and Senator Tina Munoz Barnes. It would authorize the deadbeat parents' most wanted list be made public. Um, do you guys currently have something like this internally, and, and maybe what is your reaction to, to this bill? Well, we've uh, seen the bill. And uh, we look forward to working with uh, Speaker Juan Pat on it. There, there may be some issues with it. Uh, of course, um, we've just taken a cursory look. But we're, we're looking forward to working with her. Uh, internally, we don't necessarily have, had, have something internally, but we have planned in the past uh, to, to do uh, similar um, programs. I mean, there isn't a, um, I mean, this sort of program is done, again, nationwide. And so it was something that we're looking to do. It'll be a little bit more innovative as far as, as trying to get um, these arrearages down. Mm -hmm. well, speaking of innovative uh, ideas, KUAM and of course the AG's office were partnering to launch a new segment which will air tomorrow, um, APB. APB. I want to explain it a little bit, and I really like the title, by the way. Well, see, uh, <laughs> a Absent Parents Bulletin. And essentially what it is, it's um, we have a number of parents out there um, non-custodial parents who have uh, warrants on them uh, because they haven't been making their payments and uh, we can't find them. Um, there's several criterion. You know, you have to, you know, there has to be a certain amount. Uh, you have to be out of touch for how long, right. uh, mm -hmm. for a certain length of time. There has to be a warrant out, yeah, for yeah. their failure to appear in court as well. Right, so we're using that to, uh, I mean, it's similar to the other programs um, you guys have, the fugitive mm -hmm. files and the traffic violators. It's the same thing. If people know of these individuals, and um, we're looking forward to, to the program working, and actually uh, with our other program, we were trying to roll out the dis delinquency list. We've been getting people coming in and making payments because they don't want to get on that mm -hmm. list. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, if, if something like this, if this uh, people hear about, um, or they know about people on, on the, the APB, they can contact uh, our office, or actually they should be contacting the warrant, the marshal's division at the Superior Court because there is a warrant out. And, and we'll, we'll only do the cases with the warrants right now. Right. Okay. So they should contact the warrants, uh, warrants division of um, the marshal's office. All right. Well, we certainly thank you guys for coming in tonight. Thank you. Thank you.